What's going on, guys? Welcome to Beauty and the Beast, episode 339B. I am the Beastly Gamer. And this part two. Is part two. And this is... Kate. Hi, guys. And uh, we've been away for a while. There's been a lot of stuff going on. And I don't want to get all into that. I just want to let you guys know we're back. Like uh, Randolph and Mortimer in Trading Places. And uh, there's been a lot going on with us at home. And uh, there's been a lot that we've been doing lately. And uh, we wanted to share with you guys. We hope you guys are doing well. We're always happy to see you guys and share our lives with you. Uh, I want to start off with some, some portable news. Uh, Miss Beastly over here has been playing some 3DS. Yeah, actually a lot of 3DS. She's been playing 3DS so much that she, she sees everything in 3D. And um, she didn't get a chance to do the reviews on some of the games that she's been beating lately. But I want you to kind of talk to some of the guys and... Um, let them know. You beat two games recently? Yeah. Um, I beat The Legend of Zelda. What is that? A Link Between Worlds and Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus. Yes, sir. Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus was a, a timeless classic when I was a kid. and uh, I, I, was... I never played it until now, and I do not like it. You beat it, though. I beat it. Of course I beat it. I had to beat it. Once I start a game, it's kind of hard to not beat the game. It's just how I am. But um, the controls are the worst part of that game. Absolute worst. And as you're playing, the story is progressing while you're trying to play. So you got to try to play. It's Titanfall. Yeah, it's stupid. you got, you got to try to pay attention to the story and play at the same time and it's just pointless and stupid the controls were stupid the, t the story wasn't even that good to me like I didn't even really like it so um, boo Kid Icarus you can't be dog and Kid Icarus like that you know they got him in Smash Brothers now he'll whoop that ass uh, I didn't get a chance to play Kid Icarus I was uh, doing other things like working and uh... don't waste your time but uh, so th that does not get your KD seal of approval at all no Nope, the, the ending? I only played it because your son had it for so long. I needed a new game to play on the 3DS. He said it was okay. He said it was good, but he never beat it yet. My son's a loser. And Brett, I know you're watching this. Oh, you that was, suck. That was Brandon. Oh, he's a loser too. <laughs> they both suck. Because we get them games and they never beat the game. So get to a, a part of the game that's hard. And then stop. But it's good for me because then I get all these games that I can just play. Jeez, these idiots still haven't beat Resident Evil 5. They got to the last <sighs> boss and quit. Losers. Quit. They must have got quit. that from their mother. Now, the other game you beat on 3DS was A Link Between Worlds. Yeah. Uh, and this is another great Zelda game. I, I personally haven't had a chance to play it. This was my first Zelda game. Yeah. Like, when I was younger, I saw everybody playing the Zelda games on, like, the Nintendos and stuff, and I was like, oh, that's lame, I don't want to play that. Well, when you were younger, it was Super Nintendo, but you were born Super like Nintendo, yeah. three years before the Super Nintendo came out, so. So, I was like, no, I don't want to play that, I don't play I've never played a Zelda game on any system until now, and I have to say, it was an awesome game. It was awesome, like, I really liked the story, I liked the mechanics, I just, I loved that game. It, it was, I really think you should play it. I think you should shut up. No, uh, I, I definitely will when I get 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 an opportunity. I, I love Zelda. I, it's a time tested game. Um, I beat uh, Link to the Past. Played many many hours of Nintendo. Uh, Twilight Princess. We got Skyward Sword. I don't think we even played it. Though. That's that's what I'm I'm ready for more Zelda games though. Like I want to play them all they're, just because of that game. They're all slightly different and they 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 tell an interwoven story that is usually similar but not the same. So. Um, I think The Legend of Zelda Part 2 was the 2D, I mean the, the side-scroller. That was probably my least favorite, but it was very deep as well. I'm happy to hear you liked it. So on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate A Link Between Worlds, and would you recommend Well, I guess we already know you'd recommend I'd it. I'd recommend it to everyone, and um, honestly, I'd give it like a 9.5. Wowzers. Yeah. Like, it was... I would play it again. Good. I really liked it. I And I keep telling your son to beat it. So Your you, other son. You jump right on it, huh? Yeah. She does that with things she likes. Um, okay, but there's this no. This guy. There's a, there's a lot. You know, I couldn't miss the opportunity. I'm a PC gamer now. Um, so good. I, I'm really happy you like that. Another game we've been playing a lot of together 
is uh, the game you guys see in the background. Destiny. What I want to be playing right now. Destiny is one of my favorite games of now. Uh, the the beta just ended today, um, and uh, it was unlike any other first person shooter experience I've had. Uh, it really pulled me in. It was non-stop enjoyment. The, yeah. The single player stuff, the multiplayer stuff, the crucible, going to the earth and, and doing missions with my buddies. Uh, I did a few missions with Briar Rabbit, Robbie. Not too nerdy. We played probably the most and Unreal Gamer. And uh, I didn't play with you. Yeah, we didn't get to play together. I could have. I just didn't want to step back to the PS3. Because you're Cause lame. We got like four PS3s. I just didn't want to do it, baby. Well, I played the whole campaign by myself and I was awesome. So suck it. I didn't need no help. But you only suck, baby. Anyway, uh, yeah, Destiny. I need people to play with, guys. Nobody is sending Kate any friend friend invites. What's going on here? I is got a couple. She got a couple? She needs more than a couple. She needs you. It's, just pretend like I'm Uncle Sam. She needs you to uh, send her a friend invite. It's You're pretty dark Uncle Sam. And this is... Hey, Barack, Barack Obama is the president. One of the worst presidents of all time. But he's the president. It's Miss underscore Bolden underscore 09, right? Yeah. You guys send her a friend invite. M-I-S-S. Yeah. Uh... Because uh, she's awesome in video games. She likes to play games. She likes to play with people. And she needs people to get her to actually talk while she plays video games. Because she likes to act like a gerbil and not speak at all when she plays. Behind the scenes, I talk. If you go, oh, really? Word? I've been getting mad at the screen. Screaming. Craziness. But, yeah, as you guys can see, Destiny, the game, is, is a really fun game. There's a lot going on in it. And um, I can't wait till September. But another good game is coming out in two days that we're going to be playing. The Last of Us Remastered. This is a game that you watched me beat and you didn't get a chance to play. No, I could have played. But um, when I got around to wanting to play the story, we had this news about it coming out on the PS4. So I was like, well, might as well wait. My first experience playing through it, why not do it on the PS4? And just so you guys know, the moment I walk in the door from working at night, her campaign will end. Because I will be going I'll to I already have player. beaten it. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, The Last of Us, I think I think that game could literally keep me busy probably till the end of the year, even with all these great games coming out. The multiplayer is so, there's so much substance to it. Uh, I wish Briar Rabbit wasn't so down on it. He seems kind of depressed, thinking that it's only the single player campaign. But the multiplayer in that game is so deep. I, r I really wish he would get it just so he can experience it. Well, maybe eventually. Mr. Rabbit, Miss Chan, please talk to the rabbit and tell him he needs this game. It'll change your life in more ways than one. Now we um her life really yeah it'll change her life. So we've been uh, going out and spending time together lately. So that we don't get to do too much because we have a house full of kids. We went to see some movies, and this is what we're going to start doing on Beauty and the Beast. We're going to see a movie, something new, either something streaming or something in theaters. This week we went and saw two movies. That's right, we got away. We tied all the kids up, and we tied each one of them into a corner uh, in the living room, and we left the house for about five hours. Hung some, some chicken above their head. Uh, I put a, a box of ramen noodles above my kid's head and some water by their feet. Um, yeah, but we went and uh, saw Lucy starring Scarlett Johansson, directed by the same director who uh, made La Femme Nikita or um, Point of No Return with, Jen, with uh, Bridget Fonda, which is one of my favorite movies, and uh, The Professional. So I was really looking forward to that because this guy, he really likes uh, his... his uh, Nikita's. He likes his female protagonist, and he really accents uh, the femininity of a woman being strong in his films. Um, Scarlett Johansson in this movie. What do you think of this movie overall? Give me an overall point of view on it, without any spoilers, guys. Um, it was okay. It was um, not as good as I thought it was gonna be for the premise of the movie. But, like, some of the things were a little over the top, but she did a good job. Like, she was a good actress in the movie. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, the, the thing uh, that struck me the most about her as a character, Lucy, was the both ends of the spectrum that she had to play in this film. She went from being a helpless woman who was incredibly afraid, and it was vis she was visibly very distraught at the beginning of the movie. Uh, and she acted it out so well that you would... 
I really felt bad, like, watching her act this role, you know, going through this metamorphosis. And as things started to progress through the movie, she became the exact opposite of that. And um, I like the movie. I'm not going to spoil anything, but... Um, they could have done more with it. With the premise of, of, of you, your brain. What happens in this movie is she has a... It shows us in the trailer, so this is not a... Tra- a, a, a this is not a spoiler. She actually comes into contact with a substance that makes her brain operate at gradually up until 100. She uses 100 percent of her brain power, and uh, in this movie, we're theoretically using what 10 percent, yeah. And so, uh, at certain points throughout the movie, she's able to do things, you know, um, kind of react or act outside of our own reality almost because of the the powers that come with this type of brain operation, which is awesome. Uh, one of the things I didn't like about the film was, you guys know how Vulcans are in Star Trek. She started to go into that mode where you lost lost her humanity. I would have preferred um, her to keep a degree of her humanity, a degree of her desire to to stay human. You know, it kind of explained that a little, but in like in the movie, why she was that way. But it's it's all hypothesis. Like it, you don't really know if this is how it would be. So you're wanting it to be something else. Why well, they pictured it a different way? Would you, um, as far as the guys watching the video, would you recommend them go see the movie or wait till it comes on? Um, I would wait. I wouldn't. I wouldn't actually go to the theater to see it. I'm happy I went to see it. Scarlett Johansson has always been one of my favorite uh, actresses since Jordan Two Delta. Delta. From the island. Yes, I remember her name. Okay, that was one of my favorite movies made by Michael Bay, and since then he's gradually declined. But the island is one of my favorite movies, and I think she played uh, a nearly perfect role for a female. And I fell in love with her during that film. I was like, oh my god, Scarlett Johansson is a shit. Uh, I would actually tell you guys the same thing. Uh, this definitely isn't one that you have to see in theaters. If you're a fan of Scarlett Johansson like I am. Maybe you can go check out the movie. She did a great job in it. The story was put together fairly well. There are some over-the-top, you know, scenarios. And you would kind of want to see other things done with this type of brain power than the things that she actually did in this film. So, yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give the movie about a 7. Yeah. I'd give it a, a solid 7. It was, it's a movie you'd want to watch, but you wouldn't really want to pay to go to the theater to watch it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it, uh, but it definitely isn't one of the best movies of the year. Uh, and so that's what we think about Lucy starring Scarlett Johansson. The other movie we saw, we saw yesterday, and it's called Rise of the Planet of the Apes, uh, starring uh, my kids. Uh, these these little bastards. It was Ri- awesome. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. What awesome. are your thoughts on that? Awesome, awesome. Uh, it was so good to me, like, just... Caesar. <laughs> yeah, the the realism of the way they looked and, and their facial expressions, the way they acted, I would be terrified in that situation. Would you would you poop yourself? No, I wouldn't. I, would. I, I wouldn't pull a, a you. I would. I'd throw it at him. They really think I was an ape. Uh, the, the way this movie was, was done was done extremely well. They were incredibly uh, detail-oriented as far as the motion capture of the apes. Uh, we we actually saw a little expose yesterday on YouTube about the way that the motion capture was done and and the the guys who actually did it. There was a team of six people that did all the monkeys who did all the monkeys in the movie. And there are hundreds of them at least, uh, but there they, it was done so well. The facial animation of of the apes looks extremely realistic. Yeah, the story takes place ten years after the original story, starring James Franco, and uh, there was a disease that broke out that wiped out. 90, 95% of humanity? Something like that, yeah. One in 500 people survived. Uh, and uh, the the movie starts off with Caesar in the, in the forest with his eight family that he's been raising and teaching for 10 years. And they're very advanced compared to the first movie. They, they can make fires. They've built homes. Uh, they can say words. They all know sign language. They do fluent sign language. And uh, they're living in harmony. And, and then they come into contact with humans who they, at, at some point in the beginning of the film the apes are wondering if humans even exist anymore yeah. because they haven't seen them in two years and then they run into some humans and that's when things start that's to great. happen and when they happen it happens so well uh, they're, they're 
there are good guys and bad guys on both sides of this. So you don't really know, you, you feel the plight of the apes. Yeah, you want to root for both of them. You feel the plight of the human beings, and it kind of takes you out of what you are, and you realize that, hey, across across the field, are, we're the same. We just look different. And um, you kind of root for both at the end of the movie. I'm not going to spoil anything. I would give this movie a solid 9.5. And tell you if you have not seen Rise of the Planet of the Apes from the Beast of Gamma. See it in theaters. See it in, th in, in, in theaters in 7D. That way you can smell the ape's breath. It's awesome. That is serious stuff. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's what we got to say for today, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed Beauty and the Beast. Please support the video with a like. If you're new to the video or new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other videos in the playlist. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'm Kate. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.